We're at our stopover point, halfway between where we were in the Mojave National Preserve and where we eventually want to be in Seattle, Washington for the holidays. That's like 1,400 miles between the two, so we are like 600 miles closer to Seattle and we are in this beautiful boondocking site out in the middle of nowhere. It's just peaceful here. Okay, so maybe we're parked on the side of the road in a neighborhood in the suburbs of Chico, California. It's still really pretty here, but it's not our typical camping spot. We're actually visiting Jenny's aunt. You can see that's her house right on the other side of the trailer, and she was nice enough to give us electrical hookup while we're here, and we've got water, so it's a pretty good setup. It is funny how Chico, California was like the perfect stopover point on our way to Seattle, and we haven't seen Jenny's aunt in about a year and a half, I think it's been since we've visited last time. So it's, it's great to come here and see her and her boyfriend Sam. And Sweetie, let me tell you, has a blast here because they're both huge dog people. So Sweetie's actually in their house right now and we, we can hear her barking. I'm sure she's playing with them. Uh, and they have a little dog named Jazzy. So Sweetie just has a ton of fun here. This is like perfect for her. She gets to hang out and play all day. They have all these dog toys and she's actually gonna hang out in their house while we are out filming today. It's crazy how used to silence we have gotten while boondocking. When we're out in the middle of nowhere, we have no cars driving by, you, can, you can't typically hear the highway, but here in a town, and this isn't even a busy town, there's, you know, we're in the suburbs, we're not in like downtown Chico or anything like that. There is so much noise here. You can hear dogs barking and people using their leaf blowers and there are cars driving by constantly and the thousands of garbage trucks in the morning that want to come <laughs> and a really loud street sweeper. It's just so much noise that when you live in a town you get used to, but when you stay out boondocking constantly, it's weird how unused to all these sounds we are. When we're out boondocking and a car drives by, I find myself paying attention to that sound of that car and watching it drive by typically, but here I find myself still catching the sounds of the cars that drive by and paying attention to it and focusing on it. Oh my gosh, there goes one There now. goes one right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so distracting. <laughs> I, uh, I already very thoroughly miss the peace and quiet of most of our boondocking locations we've been to, but darn it, we're not going to be back to one for at least six weeks, I think. I always get so excited when we come to suburban areas like this because then we can get our electric bikes out and ride around to anywhere we need to go in town. The nearest grocery store to here is only like a couple miles away and our electric bikes have like 25 to 50 mile ranges on them so it's a perfect bike to commute around town in and just you know run some errands here and there and today I'm so excited to go check out some awesome historical places on these. <sighs> I'm so excited. First stop is at the uh, Bidwell Mansion, which is a state park here in Chico, California. And it was only about four miles away from Jenny's aunt's house. And these electric bikes made quick work of that drive. And what's really nice, a ride, what's really nice is most of the roads here are 25 to 30 mile an hour speed limits. And these bikes max out at about 24 mile per hour. So we're able to keep right up with traffic. Uh, and Chico's a pretty bicycle friendly town too. There's bike paths all or bike lanes all over the place too, which is awesome. And we just picked up these really beefy uh, U bolt locks so that we don't have to worry about our electric bikes while we're, you know, 
roaming around away from them. And uh, I'll go ahead and make a link uh, in the description below to um, these also, if you're curious for what we have. The Bidwell Mansion is the pride of Chico, California. Taking only three years to build and finished in 1868, this estate boasts 26 rooms totaling 12,000 square feet. Back then, General John Bidwell spent $56,000 building his manor, which today would cost millions, and a roughly one hour long guided tour lets you experience its elegance. This is Annie and John Bidwell, who lived here from 1868 until the end of their lives. A few oddities remain, like this piano, a wedding gift made in New York and shipped around South America to reach California. And these flags the Bidwells used as drapes that the state park had to have approved since it breaks the flag code. And curious handles on the walls of each room used to ring bells to summon servants as they worked here in the kitchen and laundry rooms. At its construction, the Bidwell Mansion was the height of home technology, utilizing the most modern gas lighting, plumbing, and running water systems. Upon entering the mansion, there is a spacious entry hall, a formal parlor and dining room to the right, with kitchen and laundry room behind the dining room, and a library and general's office to the left. Climbing a flight of stairs leads to a large landing connected to a number of rooms, including the master bedroom, two guest rooms, a child's room, and a VIP bedroom reserved for the likes of US presidents, Susan B. Anthony, and John Muir. A sink and faucet is in every bathroom to show off the home's state-of-the-art running water system. Three bathrooms reside on this floor as well, each with a bathtub and elephant trunk toilet. I think you can see why it gets that name. The house servants even lived well in their quarters with spacious bedrooms and a running water bathroom of their own. Up a final flight of stairs takes you to the third floor ballroom used for partying. John Bidwell was known for his gracious hospitality and used the mansion extensively for entertaining friends. There are many offshoot rooms used as guest bedrooms and storage, but eventually the ballroom was repurposed purely for storage since Annie Bidwell was a strict Presbyterian and therefore forbidden from alcohol and dancing. And what mansion is complete without a garage full of high-class wheels? Of course the Bidwells owned a number of the Bentleys and Rolls Royces of their time, adding the cherry on top to the opulent elegance of the Bidwell Mansion. Coming here and checking out the Bidwell Mansion has been on my list of things to do in Chico for years now. I've visited Chico quite a few times the past like five years or so and I've been told so many times to come check out this mansion and I never have and finally today we have and let me tell you guys it's totally worth it. Now it's only six dollars per adult to get in which is just that's so cheap that like might as well even just be free and they just bombard you with history of this beautiful mansion and it's so gorgeous inside the ceilings are way taller than I expected. Um, Annie, Bidwell's wife, is like four foot eight and the little dress that they have on the mannequin in there looks like it's a child's dress. And they did say that people back then were way shorter than they are now, but that's not what I was expecting, to be completely honest. And it's just so amazing that this has stood here for 150 years. I'm just, I'm blown away by the history in this town. But I have seen enough here. It was absolutely gorgeous inside, and I am ready to go check out another place that I have been told many times that I should go and see. So it is off to our next destination. We've got another tour to go on here at the Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. Uh, there's a self-guided tour that you can go on that doesn't have quite as much information, but we've got a whole hour to kill uh, because it's 3 p.m. now and the tour doesn't start till 4 p.m. So we're gonna go on that until we get on the guided tour where I believe we get to do tastings as well. So that's really cool. This kind of has like a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory feel for it, except 
for adults. Despite nationwide availability, I had never had a beer by the Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, so I was excited for this tour. The self-guided tour is pretty lackluster and only displays a few old-timey machines that used to be used for producing beer, so if you're looking for a full explanation of the brewing process as well as company history, definitely schedule a guided tour. However, you at least get to walk out onto a platform overlooking four tanks used to produce their beer, each with a plaque explaining their name and purpose. The self-guided tour didn't take as long as we thought, so with a half hour to kill, we visited their on-site restaurant and bar. We didn't try any beer since we were saving that for the tasting on the tour, but we scarfed our loaded fries so we didn't miss the start at 4 p.m. The guided tour starts with a journey into the past and meeting the founders, Paul Camusi on the left and Ken Grossman on the right. Grossman claims the brewery's name comes from his love for hiking the mountains of Sierra Nevada. Our tour guide Jordan started with history, but we were excited for the process. They are extremely selective on which hops go into their beers because different hops provide different flavors. And crushing the hops between your hands releases their intense aroma. These in particular smelled of sweet grapefruit with a floral hint. The tour continued through the facility displaying different tanks, what was in them, and their purpose. We revisited the copper kettle room, except this time on the floor. Interesting fact, the copper kettles are only copper clad. Ken loved the look so much he paid big to have them retain this old timey look. And then, the moment we'd been waiting for, the free tasting. We sampled four of their famous beers, Pale Ale, Otrevez, Tornado, and Narwhal. I'm a little picky, but surprisingly, I liked all of them. Jenny, however, mm, not so much. There was one of the four she loved, though, so we just couldn't leave without taking home a six pack. All right, Jenny, what was your favorite beer from the tasting? Oh, I don't know. Hmm, what could it have been? I don't have any idea. Maybe the Otrevez, yeah? <laughs> Mine too? Yeah, it it's... has this distinct lime flavor and it's just so good. Yeah, they'd say that it's made with lime and agave. It's very light, very limey. It's delicious, refreshing. I mean, that is a contender for my favorite beer. Yeah, this was really good. Yeah. And the fact that I can buy it just all over the country, you know, that's well, a total plus. Yeah, and it was really cool going on this tour and having the tastings at the end because I got to taste some beer that I've never had before and I probably never would have had had I not gone on that tasting yeah. or on the tour. And Maybe we'll never have again. Yeah, and that's the first time I've ever toured a brewery. So it was really cool listening to uh, our tour guide Jordan tell us, uh, you know, he walked us through all the steps of the beer making process. Uh, just he told us what all those vats were and what they did in the process and I'm sure I remember all of it forever. Yeah. I'm a beer making expert now, right? Yeah, because I remember what <laughs> half the stuff was even called. I know. <laughs> but we had so much fun and now we have to ride home in the cold because the sun has begun to set. It's not that cold. It's, it's okay. really not that cold. My, She's, my, she is very, very, she has a very weak, very low tolerance to cold. It's uh, really not that cold out here. And you're bundled up, we're bundled. We're gonna be just fine. My eyes were watering on the way here. I guarantee they're gonna do it on the way back. We'll be alright. At least you have glasses. I don't even True. have glasses. Goggles would be nice. It would be very nice. And if you guys are curious about the electric bikes that we have and use, I'll go ahead and throw some links in the description below to other videos that we've made specifically about these bikes. It's got all the information and everything. We love them. We've had them for a, a, you know, a few months now. Well, actually, what, has it been six months? Yeah. Yeah, it's been about six months now, and we love them, especially for trips like this around towns. You know, you can just zip around on the bikes. They've got a top speed. Uh, we were getting 24 mile per hour today. They're fast, they're fun, they're all electric, so, you know, you don't have to mess around with, you know, any oil changes or gasoline or anything like that. They fold up. It's they're great so uh go ahead and check those links out for those videos and we also have a promo code if you want to purchase them yourself uh if you go to the link in the description below it'll take you to electric bikes website that's the manufacturer of these and if you use fade unbound at checkout you can get these saddlebags for free that we're carrying our beer home with but that's all for today catch you guys later bye